Okay, so this is part two of our two-part series on drawing a set of double doors, creating a set of double doors family in, in Revit. So what we've got so far is we've got two doors and then basically two openings in those doors uh, where we're going to, in this uh, in this part, we're going to put in a piece of glass within that uh, opening of the two doors. And so that's going to be our next step here is in adding in that glass. All right, so let's go back down to our reference level here. All right, so here you can see the door. So this is door number one. And this is door number two over on that side. And you can see where that void uh, came in and cut, it, cut that opening in our door. So now what we need to do is we're going to just put in a piece of glass inside that door. All right, and so what we're going to do is going to draw a new reference plane. So I'm going to create reference plane. And I'm going to draw that reference plane kind of right between these two parameters that are controlling the exterior and, and interior side of that door. So I'm just going to go kind of right down the middle. Okay. All right, so this is where I'm going to put that piece of glass. And I want that glass centered in that door. And I want it to stay centered in that door. So I'm going to need a dimension to uh, in order to do that. So I'm going to dimension and lock that dimension um, so that reference plane stays in the middle. So I'll go to the dimension command, go to that exterior reference plane, center uh, reference plane, and the backside reference plane. All right, and I'm going to set it, and I'm going to set it to equal. All right, so that's what basically, and I don't need to actually, I, at this point I really don't even need to lock it because it's going to keep it equal anyways. So no need to lock it, just set it to, so that the dimension is equal. So let me kind of move these over so they're out of the way, a little bit easier to read. There we go. Okay, so now here's that reference plane I created for my glass and it's running down the middle and it's equidistant between the front and back side of the door so it's running right down the middle of it that's the plane at which I'm going to draw that um, that glass and I actually want to make this a work plane and I'm going to draw the glass so the glass is centered so the piece of glass is actually centered on this reference plane in order for this to uh, order for us to use this as a work plane I've got to label it so I gotta give it a name so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it and over here on the properties dialog box there's a little little uh, category for name and I'm going to call that glass. All right, so that's the name of this reference plane. So now when I select that reference plane, somewhere, there it is. Yeah, it'll say glass. All right, so that's my glass reference plane. All right, so let's draw that glass in the exterior view. So let's go to our exterior elevation. Okay, and now I'm going to do a create an extrusion. So I go to create, extrusion. I'm going to set my work plane. So I go to set. And we're going to pick a reference plane. So I'm going to go a named reference plane. So I go to reference and find reference plane glass. So that's the one we just created. All right. And then I say OK. All right. And then just to show you in 3D view. So I go to 3D and then I'll say show, ref show work plane. Notice that work plane is in the middle of that door. That's, our, that's that glass reference plane we just did. So, All right. So let's go to our exterior elevation. All right, so now we're going to just draw that glass in. So I, I'm in the uh, already in the um, create extrusion. So I'm going to just use pick lines, and I'm going to pick those reference planes that um, are basically representing the style width and rail width. All right, so I'm going to lock it to those reference planes, so that the glass every time the glass uh, or the style width and rail width change, that glass shrinks to fit. It'll shrink to fit that opening, and I'm going to trim it so it's a closed loop. All right, and now for the um, uh, for the thickness of the glass, I'm going to say that this glass is about an inch thick. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to actually the reference plane is sitting in the middle of that one inch thick glass, so I'm going to extrude a half an inch forward and a half an inch backwards. So I'm going to change this to a half an inch forward, all right, and a half an inch backwards in the negative direction. So the negative basically means it'll extrude backwards. All right, so there and there, hit apply, and then finish. All right, let's take a look at it in 3D. All right, so there's our glass there. You can see that's the glass piece there. And there's our door. All right, so there's my glass piece that's in there now. All right, so let's do that same thing on the other side, and then we'll test it out. So go to exterior, extrusion. All right, go to create, extrusion, pick lines. All right, I'm going to pick that line, 
that reference plane. Alright, and I'm picking them and locking them. All right, and by default, it goes all it goes it, the uh, it start and ex, um, and end extrusions will stay the same. Hit finish. Let's take a look at it in 3D. Good. All right, let's test it out real quick. Let's go to four blue squares, and let's just make this uh, six, six, and then let's make that uh, three and three. All right, and then hit apply. Good. So what happened was our style and width changed dimensions, uh, our style and rail changed dimensions, and our glass also changed dimensions with it. So, so far, so good. All right, and hit cancel, then undo. All right, so now we've got our glass. Uh, so we basically have mo all of our geometry created. Let me go back to that exterior view real quick. All right, so you see this here? This is the uh, this little diagonal line here is the... Um, is a symbolic line, but it basically represents the swing of that door. And what it basically does is it points, if you think of this as an arrow, it points to basically where the hinges are on this door. So it's correct in pointing to this side, it, there are hinges on this side, but each of these doors has a set of hinges. So what we want to do is actually draw two of these, one for each door, so that it points to the hinge side of that door. So let me just pick, which, let's pick this line here, and it's called, this one is the Elevation Swing Projection. All right, so to do that, what I want to do is I want to keep this thing centered. Uh, so see how here, when the door height increases, I want that little inter intersection here to stay in the middle of that door. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this equal dimension. Let me put a reference plane. So I'm going to go to Create and Reference Plane. I'm going to just draw a reference plane across the middle of that door. It's not exact, not exactly in the middle, but close enough. So there's a reference plane going horizontally across there. And I want to do an equal dimension, so I want to make sure that, that that reference plane stays in the middle. So I go to the dimension command, I dimension to the top reference plane, middle reference plane, and bottom reference plane. Alright, and I'm going to hit EQ, so make those two equal. Alright, so now basically, the, where, however, whatever, whenever we change the height, this reference plane is going to stay in the middle. And I'm going to go to this line. I'm going to create a um, uh, two new hinge indicating uh, symbolic lines here. So I go to create and where are they? Sorry, I think it's annotate. Yeah, there it is. So I go to annotate and then I go to symbolic line. All right, and we want those elevation. What was it? Elevation swing projection, I believe. Yeah, so we're in symbolic lines, and then I went to subcategory, and I get the drop-down menu, and what I'm looking for is elevation swing projection. Okay, and what I'm going to do is going to go from the uh, the upper left-hand corner of this door. I'm going to go to actually let's do this side. I'm going to go to this side of the door. I'm going to uh, um, lock it to that center point. And that center point. Okay, let's test this thing out. Let me just uh, delete these here. All right, let's test this thing out. So let's see if uh, when I change the height of the door to nine feet, this thing should stretch with it. Good. Yeah, so that stretches with it. Now let's trade change the width to eight. Oops, not eight feet. Apply. Good. So that's what we want. We want this um, hinge indicating symbol here. We want that to kind of move with the when the door gets wider and stretch with it, right? So let's do that same thing on the other side. So let's go to create. Oops, sorry. Annotate symbolic line elevation swing projection, and I'm going to go from this corner here to the midpoint to that bottom corner there. Okay. All right, so now I've got two hinge indicators for both doors. And let's change the door geometry in four blue squares. Let's change it back to what it was, six feet and eight feet. Hit OK, and it stretches back. So that so now what we've got is um, the symbolic lines, and they're stretching with the with the door itself. So, All right, so those are my hinge indicators. Yep, question? Oh, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually locking them. I'm actually... There is there's a reference plane intersection here, 
and here. And so that's basically at that intersection there. So I'm locking it to that re those reference points, but I'm not actually locking it. What it actually does is when I click that point, it holds it to that point. So I didn't actually lock any reference planes. I just put the reference planes in and be and somehow magically, I don't know. It it basically when I drew it to that re that intersection of those two reference planes, it just locks it to that reference plane with those symbolic lines. So symbolic lines are a little bit easier to work with than uh, than the geometry because the symbolic lines are 2D and so they they tend to s snap to those and stick to those uh, reference planes better than like the geometry is. So any other questions on that? All right, so then let's let's go on. So then we've got um, so we've got our hinge indicators there. We've got our glass in. All right, and let's say I'm going to save this real quick. Save project. I'm just going to save it to my desktop real quick. All right. So there is our uh, window so far. So at this point, we're ready to just put in that the final step, which is to put in that 2D information uh, that represents the door swing. All right. So all that sort of stuff is done here in the plan view. And let me spread some of this stuff out so that we can get in there. I'm going to move these up a little bit to kind of make way for what we're going to do next. Okay, so this is the part that's a little bit tricky. So sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't work. Um, if it doesn't work, I've got a workaround that uh, that we can use. But what we want to do is we're going to draw the plan view of these doors, and what we want is when we expand the width and height. I'm sorry, when we expand the width of the doors, we want these 2D plan representations to to you know. So so when we go from a six foot door to a eight foot wide door, what we want is those two doors to kind of stretch to become uh, four foot wide doors. All right, so those two are those are also done as uh, symbolic lines. All right, and so what we're going to do is let's see, I'm going to go to uh, sorry, annotate symbolic line, and we're going to pick the um, plan view. All right, plan view swing cut. All right, we're going to do that one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this intersection here. I'm going to click at that point there. So that's basically where our hinge is. We've got a six foot wide door right now. So I'm going to just go up three feet. All right, on that side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to go to this intersection here, click there, go up three feet. All right, because this is the half half of that uh, of that door. Then what I want to do is I'm going to put in the arc in here to represent the swing of that door. Okay, plan swing cut. All right, and let's just try this three-point arc. So there. Then this is the point at which those two meet. Okay. All right, so I'd use a three-point arc to draw in those two, those uh, uh, the swings of the door. So let's just test it out. Let's see if this works. Cross your fingers. All right, so let's make this width uh, eight feet, and apply, and it worked. So I got eight feet. Let's go to five feet. Apply, good. All right, six feet. Back again. Okay, good. So, uh, so the plans, so the symbolic lines are stretching and they're they're moving with the geometry. There's about a 50/50 chance that that's going to work. I was lucky on this one, so I'll show you the workaround. Um, but let me. Uh, Let's see. Let yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let me um, well let me finish this thing off real quick. So uh, what I want to do is uh, the I'm going to do another reference plane on this side to represent the door thickness. All right, and then another reference plane over here. All right, so I want to add some thickness because so if you go back to that handout here, it actually shows it actually shows the thickness of the door and it actually has the style width and uh, and the uh, hinge style width back here. So let's add that information in too. All right, so I'm going to put in a reference plane over here to represent the thickness of the door. I'm going to put a dimension in. All right, let's convert that dimension into the thickness parameter. So I go, I select the dimension, I go up to label, scroll down to thickness, and it stretches that out. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. I dimension it. Okay, select the dimension, go up to label, 
scroll down and turn that thickness into uh, turn that into the thickness parameter. All right, so there you go, thickness and thickness on that side. Then I'm going to use those same uh, same symbolic lines. So I go to annotate symbolic lines. I'm using plan swing cut, and I'm going to draw in the thickness of that door. So I go there, there, and there. All right, other side, there. There, oops. All right, let's test it out real quick. Go to eight feet. Apply. Good. All right, that works. All right, I'm going to add in a couple more reference planes in here uh, to represent the uh, style width thickness and the hinge side um, style thickness. So let's go to create, reference plane, there, and there. Okay, and then let's put our, uh, let's dimension them. All right, that one's gonna be our, my style hinge. Uh, width thickness, so I go to select the dimension, go up to label, and I go to style width hinge. Oops, hang on. Sorry, let me do, let's do this one up here first. Alright, style width latch. I did something. I don't know what it did. Okay, let's do the other side. Ah. Here, let's do it. Let's do it differently here. All right, I'm just going to go to. Um, Annotate, draw a symbolic line. I'm just going to draw a symbolic line across here like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Well, let me fix the other side. Shoot. Yeah, let's do it without the reference planes. All right, so I go to, to annotate, symbolic line. All right, draw that line across. Dimension from here to here. Style with latch. There we go. All right, so what I did is I just drew a symbolic line across there, dimensioned it, and turned that into style uh, style with latch. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's do it without the reference planes, though. I think it mixes it up a little bit. So symbolic line. I'm going to draw just a line across here. Okay. Dimension it, then take that dimension, change it into the uh, style with latch dimension. There we go. Okay, and then let's do that without reference planes down here. All right, go to create, sorry, annotate, symbolic line. Okay, go across there. Dimension from there to there to, oops. I want to make sure I go to reference, I'm dimensioning to reference planes and not to. Um, not to the actual geometry. So there, and then this is going to be style with latch. There you go. All right, delete that one. Draw a symbolic line. All right, pick the dimension, and this is going to be style with latch. All right. Oh, is it hinge? Sorry. You're right, yeah. Hinge. Start, start with hinge. Did I do that on the other side? Oh, I did latch two there. Oops. Start with hinge. There we go. Okay, so let's test this thing out. Here, let's make the door... Um, let me move this over to this corner here. Four blue squares. Let's make this thing uh, six feet wide. Apply. Good, so it 
resized uh, it. Then let's change our style width um, to uh, say 8 and 8. Good. All right, stretched them there. And then let's look at it in the elevation view. Good, stretch them there. All right, good. So far, so good. All right. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to push this into then a new project. So let's go to a, let's open up a project. So I go to file to new, and then project. Let's use the architectural template. All right. So there's my project file. All right. I'm going to step back and go back to my family file. And what I'm going to do to load this into my project file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go load into project. So I go to there, click there, pushes it into the project. Of course, I need a wall in order to uh, create this. So I go to wall. All right, let's put a wall in there. All right, and then door. All right, we'll drop it into there. All right. So now what you're seeing here is I've got my door, I've got my swing drawn. You don't see any of those dimensions or reference planes or anything like that. But I also have the door in there in the plan view in the closed position. So it's a little weird. It's got the door in the open position and the door in the closed position. So my next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set a visibility parameter on that guy. And uh, I'm going to change the visibility of the door in the closed position so that it doesn't show up in the plan view. Um, and it will show up in the elevation view. So I go to... Now, and I go to my elevation view, you'll notice I don't see those 2D plan swings. So the sim that's the reason why we use those symbolic lines. So the, the, the uh, um, symbolic lines, you can only see them when you're looking perpendicular to them. So in a plan view, you're looking straight down on top of them, so you're looking perpendicular down on top of them. So symbolic lines only show up when you're looking at them perpendicular. So when I, show, when I go to an elevation view or a 3D view or an axiometric view, you won't see those symbolic lines show up. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this one here. I'm going to do a part three. In part three, what we'll do is we'll uh, finish this thing up. We'll create the type. We'll add a material parameters to it, and then um, we'll change that visibility parameter of the doors. All right. So let me just stop that here.